tell me the background behind this. How, how did it come to today? Okay, so the, uh, all the departments in uh, the faculty of EBE have caught What's EBE? Uh, Just, yeah. uh, engineering and built environment. Okay. So they have uh, one design course and which mostly focuses on uh, aspects of system engineering. So as they say, designing something nicely, right? And two years back, we tried to change this design course in our department to make it uh, more uh, time-worthy. And that's when me and one of my colleagues, Rihanna, see, we, we took over the course from those who were teaching it before. And Rihanna, sir. Rihanna Geske. And that's also around the time when the D school started at UCT. So last year when we instructed this course, we tried to involve a little bit of D school help. So we got like an extended two, three hours lecture from Richard Perez from D school. And while doing that, we thought, why not try to make it a proper integral part of the course. And while this all has been happening, in the business world, these things like design thinking, agile engineering, lean startup, those things are picking up. Five years back, the rate of success of startups was like five to 10%. Yes. They would stick around up to three years. But that number has been increasing quite quickly. That's because people are shifting from the traditional way of design to that involving design thinking. And Americans are not so great at adopting new, new ways of thinking. So there is not a single university in the States which has got this kind of course in which they incorporate design thinking and system engineering. And I tried to also search in almost all the universities I could. And there is, to my knowledge, there is not a single course in any university which tries to incorporate design thinking into the system engineering way of uh, uh, in, in, in any design. Well, why is it important for, for, for these students, their fourth, fourth year students, yeah. to, actually, to actually to learn about design thinking? Because without... And, and why at this particular point in their, in their studies? So by, by now they have got most of the hard skills in terms of engineering, like analytical thinking, making stuffs, building stuffs. So they know, given a problem, how to solve it using the engineering knowledge that they have gathered. but. The days are, the, so currently we are in an age in which entrepreneurship and uh, new venture are big things. The days of big uh, industries is slowly ending. They are realizing that the smaller startups, they can innovate more quickly. And if our students have to get into that phase, so if we are trying to make our students leaders and not just followers, we have to make them equipped with all the tools by which they can pick up a problem, analyze that, and see the problem modes, empathize, and then design so that the fast design is as close to the customer's requirements as possible. Mm -hmm. If they just design something without properly interacting with the customers, then they are doing a good job, but that is not viable mm -hmm. in terms of business point of view. Mm -hmm. And that is why it is very crucial that we try to bring design thinking into a course like this system engineering. Mm -hmm. And um, would, you, would you think about introducing it at earlier phases in, in their studies? Yeah, we can do that as well, but then they, they will just learn the design thinking part, but they won't be able to appreciate the system engineering part. Okay. Okay. And that's what I want to do, like get them hand in hand, mm -hmm. get them together. So like in the new curriculum that we are designing in the department, we have got uh, engineering design in both third year and fourth year. But in the third year, they will be exposed to most of the hard skills. The design thinking flavored design will only come in the fourth year. Okay. So that's the right time in which they can appreciate that, they can use that, and they can think beyond just the curriculums. Mm. Um, a lot of design thinking um, um, talks about diversity, so your engineering students actually sitting side by side with uh, humanities or yeah. legal law yeah. students, that kind of thing. Um, um, would, where, where would your students get that sort of exposure? Because going into small startups, they would need to work yeah. with different 
different so, kind of people from different disciplines. We are like lucky in the sense that the department has got three streams in which the students are registered and they have almost 60 to 70 percent of the curriculum different from each other. And so we have got three streams, namely electrical engineering, mechatronics, and electronics and computer engineering. So that sort of brings some technical diversity to the group. In addition to that, we have tried our best to have members of different uh, cultural and ethnic background in the small group that we have created. Okay. We have tried to make sure that each group should have at least one woman and maybe one who speaks either Zulu or Khalsa as a mother tongue, yes, yes. that kind of stuff. Because they're going to, and the, the challenge, how did you decide, decide on this challenge, that is the taxi industry? Oh, <laughs> the challenge was quite open, but then because of the things that happened last year, I was forced to think of how can we make our education uh, decolonal, decolonalized. Because it's very difficult to think of decolonization when you talk about engineering and science. It's much easier from a social science perspective. So as we saw in, a, in one of the lectures, uh, Ryle pointed out that there are three design schools, one in Germany, one in the States, and one in Cape Town. So when there are given assignments in these three design schools, those assignments will carry local flavor. So if I give them an assignment, I don't know, maybe designing a smart home, that is not something that Africa needs. Why can't we have design thinking and all this diversity and all these ideas we have in this course to innovate something which is really a need of the hour? And that's when the news from last Easter came, like, uh, triggered this thought. Last Easter only, we lost 200 lives just in one weekend. And that's mainly because of the poor maintenance. While all this is going on, you have got this lot of research and development happening in automatic car. So this setup is creating a divide. So the rich who can afford the automatic car, they are affording a much safer and better life. And the poorer people who can't afford, they are still forced to go in the taxi cabs, which follows no sort of uh, safety regulations, and they die. And this can be stopped only by engineers who can start thinking in a societal point of view. So then I thought that this is, a, this is the right course to incorporate that kind of flavor. So that not only our students start thinking beyond their ivory tower and appreciate what is happening around, then, but also we start adding some kind of African center flavor to the whole engineering education. Where did you study? Where did you I, I grew and, and up. Have you, been, have you been on design thinking course and how are you exposed to design thinking yourself? Uh, I've been, uh, I've done my studies in India, then my PhD from Scotland. I've been in a number of places, uh, the UK, Europe, Australia and India. And I've been in UCT for last seven years. And Why did you come to Africa? It's a nice place. <laughs> 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 it's a beautiful place indeed. And the beauty, the natural beauty is what attracts me the most in this place and sort of keeps me here. <laughs> Thank you. Is there anything else you want to add? Thanks so much. Yes. Thank you.